Hi, this is David Davis, and I'm honored to be here with Mr. John Dickinson from SwiftStack. How you doing, John? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Great, great. So tell me, what's your title at SwiftStack? What do you do? I'm the Director of Technology uh, at SwiftStack, and I'm the Project Technical Lead for OpenStack Object Storage called Swift. Okay. So you said object storage. I immediately yes. clued in on that right there. Um, why don't you tell us first, what is object storage for those who are, you know, the typical VMware admin or typical, you know, data center, you know, admin, we've got storage out there, but we might never have heard of an, an object store. Yeah. So basically there's three ways you can store data. You can use uh, block devices, you can use a file system, or you can use object storage. Object storage, we're all familiar with how block and file storage systems work. Uh, object storage is a little bit different. Uh, the basic idea of object storage is let's have a simple API that normally in most implementations and definitely with Swift is using uh, web native protocols like HTTP and it allows you to simply put the data and get the data out. The important difference on things like object storage is that if you take the traditional file system interfaces, POSIX, uh, the POSIX standard, and you relax some of those constraints, then you're suddenly able to get massive scale and massive flexibility and efficiency in your storage that are not otherwise possible with traditional vertically siloed storage systems. Okay, so I understand we might be using an object store every day and just not ever even think about it. So I give me so. some <laughs> give me some common use cases or, or ways that I might be using an object store today. Right. Well, actually my vision for Swift is that everyone will use Swift every day, whether or not they, even if they don't realize it. Okay. And I think we're actually well on our way to doing that because you can see that there are, you know, Swift today is powering some of the world's largest storage clusters, uh, including uh, like Rackspace Cloud Files, HP Cloud Storage, service providers all over North America, Europe, Asia, Australia, and a lot of private cloud deployments as well. So in our community right now, I think uh, some really exciting use cases, in addition to the literally thousands of customers that these public cloud providers have, is you've got guys like Wikipedia. If you go to uh, Wikipedia today and you look at any image, it's coming out of their Swift cluster. Uh, they're storing the images and the thumbnails there. And I think that really uh, gives a good, really good example of how yeah. object storage can be used. Uh, it's really perfect for unstructured content that you need to have, it needs to be massively available, and uh, storing videos, storing music, storing images, static web content, documents, file sharing, things like that. You know, kind of on the other extreme, uh, the private cloud uh, examples that I've seen are companies like Concur that do a lot of HR uh, expense reporting and travel, uh, travel things. They're using Swift to uh, you know, store images of the receipts you take a picture of when you want to do an expense report. And those kind of, that kind of data uh, basically this user content, this user data that has to be, uh, you know, support this massive concurrency of mobile devices and, uh, you know, web, web available, web native content uh, is what um, object storage is really great for. Okay. So besides Swift mm -hmm. being an object store, there's another object store that other people might have heard of, and that's yeah. Amazon S3. Right. So tell me, what are some of the examples of things that are stored in S3? I think it's a lot of the same sort of content okay. uh, and, you know, people looking at uh, file, store, file sharing stuff, uh, you know, kind of one of the canonical examples is things like Dropbox and Dropbox, stuff like that okay. backed up by Amazon S3. Um, what, what my perspective is, mm -hmm. uh, is that S3 is a phenomenal storage system, They're really good. They've done a lot of operational excellence there. But the problem is, is you're giving all your data away to Amazon. Right. And for me, the important piece uh, with uh, the reality of the world is that everybody has data, it's always growing, and you want to have ownership of everything that touches your data. Not just, you know, I want to be able to run it on my own hardware, but the software that's doing that and even the tool chains. And the only way you can do that is when you have open systems. And projects like OpenStack, which not only are just open source, so you can actually see it, but open governance, open community, open design, means that anybody can get involved in the project. Uh, from even just contributing uh, designs and specifications and uh, documentation to actually writing the source code and know that very quickly that's going to be used around the world at massive scale. Uh, and if you're using it to store your own storage, then you actually have a great degree of ownership of, uh, of the things that are touching your data. And that becomes incredibly important, especially looking at you know, what's been coming out of the news over the past different years, uh, year. Um, figuring out how do you um, 
as a company, you may not want or may not even be allowed to send out data outside of your data center. So being able to have ownership of this and not treat it as a black box is incredibly important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so Amazon has been incredibly successful with S3. Yes. Um, you said Dropbox. You know, I know when I go to download white papers and webinars, many times they're stored in S3. Sure. Um, but as you can't download S3 and install it in your own data center. Right. Um, it's not. It's not available. It's only Amazon. So Swift is the publicly available open source object store. Sure. And so now yes. Swift is enabling enterprises to do what the big boys at Amazon have done, you know, for a while now, very Absolutely. successfully. And in fact, uh, the way Swift started was as. Uh, the storage engine that powers Rackspace Cloud Files. Mm. So it's not just that you've got uh, the, you, c you can try to be like the big boys, but you can't actually do what the big boys are doing today with Swift. So you've got massive uh, public and private clouds being deployed at multi-petabyte scale um, all around the world at um, using Swift itself. So mm. the point is, if you've got data, if you've got to store anything from, you know, I've got a few dozen terabytes to I need to store literally dozens and dozens and dozens and more of petabytes and beyond, then you can use something like Swift and it's proven and uh, already being deployed at scale today. Okay. So at Swift Stack, mm -hmm. you guys have taken Swift and done what with it? Sure. So uh, good question. What we've done at Swift Stack is uh, taken the open source storage engine and we completely believe the fact that you should have ownership of the data. So we, uh, we ship and deliver 100% uh, upstream open source Swift. We're not providing a custom fork of that. But what we're doing is coming along the side of your Swift deployment, that storage engine, and providing a decoupled management and control plane so that you can easily do capacity adjustments, automate a lot of those operational concerns, get a lot of uh, intelligence and business intelligence about what's happening to your storage system and the data in it. So not only do you see, is your cluster healthy, but when it's not healthy, when you have hardware failures, which are normal and expected, then you can easily uh, integrate that into your existing operational methodologies. You can integrate with your existing identity management systems, whether or not that be Active Directory or LDAP or you know, whatever else you need, um, and provide a lot of services and support on top of the Swift cluster. So we're not hosting your data. We want you to be hosting your data because you need to have ownership of that. But we're providing you that management control plane so that you can uh, effectively run your uh, Swift clusters at scale and uh, be very successful in that by focusing on your business value and not having to hire up entire teams just responsible for maintaining uh, an object storage system. Okay, so you guys aren't selling hardware. Correct. You install Swift Stack on the customer's own hardware. Right. Okay. So standardized hardware off the shelf, uh, things that you're actually already using today. So you've got, uh, your company already has agreements to buy hardware from different vendors. You can use those things. And the point of, uh, of Swift, in fact, is to abstract that out so you can have heterogeneous storage uh, servers and volumes, hard drives, uh, and take advantage of that capacity adjustment. And so working with Swift stack, you can, um, we, we will help you work with those if you, if you wanted to buy new hardware and uh, buy things and balance, you know, what are, what are your CPU and RAM and storage uh, requirements and how do you balance all of that out to meet very specifically your use case. Okay. So if I wanted to, you know, learn more about Swift and Swift Stack, um, I could download, obviously, the open source Swift right. Stack, but what would the experience be different from downloading your form of of sure. Swift. So if you were going to go download the source code, which is available today, you can do that right now. Yeah. Um, there are documentation, there's a lot of documentation You have to compile online. it, it's just source code? No, it's not, it's not a uh, compile thing. In fact, all of Swift is written, all of OpenStack, in fact, is written in Python. Okay. Uh, so you can run it just about anywhere. But the, uh, when you do that, then you're going to have to spend the time worrying about not only just, hey, let's get it up and running. I think we've got a pretty good story in the open source world along those lines. But the hard part comes in, how do I tune this for my specific use case? And how do I balance out the hardware? Um, and then really where the Swift stack value comes in is how do I integrate this into the rest of the organization? Um, with authentication, with billing, with you know, the utilization pieces, alerting, monitoring, uh, those operational day-to-day -day sort of things. So the difference is if you looked at, say, a Swift stack uh, trial account, uh, if you wanted to go evaluate that, uh, you can deploy that on your on some uh, test hardware and see how that works with you. We work very closely with you to make sure that you're going to be successful. 
and uh, you can think about the business value for your application and your organization rather than um, you know what particular parameters do I need to tune, what knobs do I need to fiddle, things, things like that. Very cool, very cool. Well, you've got a fascinating story at SwiftStack. Thanks. Um, taking, you know, uh, providing a massively scalable, you know, object uh, file system, not file system, massively scalable object, object store, store yeah, right. to the enterprise, uh, allowing enterprises to do what companies like Amazon and, and Rackspace have been doing uh, for some time now very successfully. And so I enjoyed learning about SwiftStack, and in fact, I'm going to go check out uh, SwiftStack.com and download the evaluation for myself. Thanks for your time, John. Great. Thank you.